So today we're looking at a brand new power station from Opus. This is their Mega One. It has 2,000 watts of pure sine wave AC output and it has 1,024 watts of battery storage on the inside. And it is lithium iron phosphate batteries that are in here and they are rated for 3,500 cycles to 80% depth of discharge. And 3,500 cycles, if you did like one cycle a day, that would get you to 9.8 years. That's a long time. So I've had people ask me, what size of power station do I suggest they purchase? And I always tell them to look for one that's around 2,000 watts of output. And the reason that is, is because a regular 15 amp outlet in your house is 1,800 watts. So if you can get a power station that's around the 1,800 to 2,000 watts, it should be able to power most of the items that you'd plug in in your house. So a 2,000 watt power station should be able to power a refrigerator, freezer, air fryer, microwave, most of your normal uh, 120 volt appliances. So the Mega One has three different types of power output. So on the right hand side, you have 12 volt power. On the left hand side, you have USB charging ports. And then at the bottom, you have 120 volt, 20 amp outlets, just like you'd find in your house. And the Mega One also has three different ways to be able to charge it. So on the right hand side, there's a compartment that you open up and there is an AC charging cord that you could plug right into an outlet to be able to charge it. And then there's also an Anderson connector for DC charging. So on this port, you can charge it with solar panels, a maximum of 800 watts, or you could charge it through your 12 volt outlet in your vehicle. And on the left side of the unit, there's another compartment and this is where you can add an expansion battery. So you, I think you can add two expansion batteries and they're 2000 watts each. So you can expand this all the way up to like 5000 watt hours of storage if you want to. Now the cool thing I like is the expansion batteries, they actually have their own solar charge controller built into them. So you can charge this unit with 800 watts of solar, but you can charge the battery, I think with 2100 watts of solar. And then if you had two batteries, that's 2100 watts per battery. You can almost get up to like 5,000 watts of solar charging if you fully expanded this out. And that's probably one of my biggest problems with power stations is that the solar charging, I feel like really should be larger on most of them. But with this unit, if you expand it and get the expansion batteries, you have quite a bit of solar capability. So the 120 volt outlets on the front of this are considered EPS, which is emergency power supply. So what you can do is you can power a device off of the power station, and if you have it plugged in through the wall, the power will just pass through and power your refrigerator or your computer, whatever you have powered. And then whenever you lose power, it'll automatically switch and power it from the battery. And it's, a, it's an almost seamless transfer. So right now, the power from this outlet is passing through the power station and lighting up this light right here. And when you lose power, it automatically continues to power it from the battery. And you can see how fast it switched. There's just a little bit of a blink. We'll go ahead and do it again. I'm hoping that shows up on camera. It is a very fast blink. I don't know if the camera's catching it or not, but you can tell that it switches power. Probably on a device like a TV or computer, you probably wouldn't even see it uh, blink or flicker at all. So I've had the Mega One now, I think for three days, I've run it through several tests. I think I've drained it completely down to zero at least twice. And I've done some output testing, some surge testing. And what I wanna do now is I wanna go back. I wanna show you all the footage of me testing this and you can see how this actually performs. So down here in my basement, I've got my upright freezer plugged into the Opus Mega One. And then I have an Emporia smart outlet on here and I'm using that to monitor the actual power usage and to be able to track it. All right, we started this test at, what was it, 10.06 a.m. this morning and it's like 7.10 p.m. now. We got 1% left, it says six minutes remaining. 0%, zero, zero minutes remaining, still going. 7.15 p.m. All right, we've been sitting at 0% and zero minutes remaining for four minutes now, and it keeps going. We'll see how long it lasts. 
All right, we've been running for about an hour and 20 minutes at 0%. And it's still going. All right, the Opus has just died. And I got the fridge plugged back into the wall. So this ran for over two hours at 0% and died at 9, 18 p.m. So 11 hours and 12 minutes for that to run this freezer. So one thing I wanna mention about the freezer test. If you look at my Emporia Energy app, you can see there was one hour that my freezer used three times as much energy as normal. And what ended up happening was the freezer went through a defrost cycle. And that defrost cycle must use a lot more power. And I'm not sure how often that actually happens, but if it wouldn't have gone through that one hour where it defrosted, it probably would have ran the freezer two hours longer than it did. So now that we've discharged this all the way down, we're gonna go ahead and charge it. And we'll do a timer to see how long it takes to charge. There we go, starting to charge. They say the max charge rate is 1400 watts and you can see we are just over that. So the Mega One went from 0% state of charge all the way up to 144 minutes. And that seems to be a pretty fast charge time. So my next test is to actually overload the power station, try to go over 2000 watts and see what it does. I do have two heat guns here. This should be plenty enough to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on the lowest setting. Turn the next one on the lowest setting. All right, we're at a thousand watts almost. Turn this one on high. There we go, overloaded. So we got the output up to just over 2060 watts, sat there for about four seconds and then it aired out. And to clear the air, all I had to do was just turn off my loads and then I hit the AC power button again and it reset the air. This time I'm gonna run both of these heat guns on low, which will be about a thousand watts and we'll see how long the power station lasts. The power station is predicting 44 minutes 950 watts, we'll see how long it lasts. Oh, she just stripped out. 40 minutes, 20 seconds. So it ended up turning off in 40 minutes, 20 seconds. Got error number two, which is low voltage battery protection. So it basically, the battery was too low of a volt, so it turned itself off. So the Mega One output 945 watts for 40 minutes and 20 seconds and this had predicted 44 minutes. So it's about three minutes off from its prediction, so fairly close there. Now, if you take the 945 watts calculated out against the time, it comes out to be 635 watt hours of power that we consumed. And this battery is supposed to have 1,024. And there is an efficiency loss when you transfer from DC to AC you're gonna have a conversion loss, plus there's some power used to power this up. So we were able to use basically 62% of the battery to output on the loads. And I do think that's a little bit lower than what I was expecting. I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside and we're gonna test out the solar charging. I've got 800 watts of panels. We're gonna to hook to that. That's the maximum input is 800 watts. So we're gonna see if we can get the max charging out of this. All right, I've got four 200 watt panels in series. So this uses an Anderson connector to be able to connect to the solar panels. The max voltage is 80 volts DC. We're gonna go ahead and check our open circuit voltage before we plug it in. 76.6 .6 volts. So we're right up there at the max. Go ahead and plug it in. All right, looks like it's starting to charge with solar. It's slowly ramping up. Well, it looks like the most we're getting out of these panels today is 475 watts. So we're not getting the full 800 watts out of the solar panels. Of course, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. They're not pointed directly up at the sun like they should be, so it's to be expected that they'll be a little bit low. So 475 watts charging right now. It's gonna be a little over two hours it would take to charge the unit. 
So the other way to charge the Mega One is through the 12 volt outlet in your vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and get it plugged in and we're gonna see how fast it actually charges and then we can estimate exactly how long it would take to charge it up while you're driving down the road. It's been charging in the vehicle for a few minutes now. It seems to have maxed out around 98 watts. So just like other power stations, if you try to charge them off of the 12 volt outlet in a vehicle, it is very slow at charging. So 100 watts charge rate, that would be 10 hours to go from zero to 100%. So it's definitely the slowest way to charge the power station, but it at least gives you that ability. If you're like on a long road trip and you're in the vehicle for you know, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, it's, it's definitely a way you can charge it up between stops. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna do a surge test. This says it has a 4,500 watt surge capacity. So I'm gonna try to start this compressor and see what the max amps ends up being. Now I don't expect it to be able to start this compressor, but we should be able to see what the kind of the max surge is. All right, here goes. Tried to start it. The max amperage was 24.0 amps. So 24 amps times 120 volts. That comes out to 2,880 watts. So I wanna go ahead and do the compressor test one more time before I edit this video. We saw it did 24 amps max, 2,880 watts. And this time I wanna watch it and see what the continuous output is because it does seem to try for three or four seconds to start this. All right, here goes. Look at that, 24 continuous amps. So that confirms exactly what I was thinking. The 24 amps is not just the peak, but it was continuous 24 amps for three to four seconds. And I think that's fairly good for a power station. A lot of times their surge on these is very short time period maybe a half a second or less. And this one being able to do three to four seconds, I think that's pretty good. So this milling machine is a two horsepower motor on it. So we're gonna try to see what the surge is on this. All right, I got it plugged into the Mega One. All right, we got a higher surge that time. Hopefully you can see that, 25. 0.92, right? 25.92. 25.92 ends up being 3,110 watts. So after testing the Mega One, I think that it performed exactly the way I thought it would. We couldn't get it to put out the 4,500 max surge. Well, I guess we couldn't, we couldn't measure the 4,500 watts of max surge. You gotta understand we're just using an amp clamp trying to catch that um, max amperage to, to measure that. And it could be happening so fast that the meter's not catching it. But what we do know is that it was putting out around 24 to 25 amps continuous output for three to four seconds to try to start something. So I think that's pretty good on the surge capacity. The other thing I like about this unit is that it is only 27.8 pounds. So you can, you can carry it around, you can throw it in your car, you can take it with you. It's a fairly portable unit and to be able to have 2000 watts of output and still be that light, I think that that's a good feature. And of course it does have the, the EPS, emergency power supply feature where you could keep something plugged into this in your house and if the power went out, it would continue to power it um, until the power came back on. So like I said, this is a brand new unit from Opus and it's actually, I think it's out for pre-order right now or pre-sale, it actually doesn't, start shipping out, I think, until around October 1st. And they have a sale price on it right now. It's $499 if you pre-order it. And I'm gonna put a link in the description below. And if you use my link, apparently you'll get an extra 5% off the cost. And I think that $499 sale price, I think that's gonna go all the way through like October 7th or so, somewhere in there, first week of October. And one other thing I will mention about Opus is they do have where they donate 5% of their sales, they donate power stations to people that, that need them. So if you have like a, a medical issue where you need equipment to be powered, if there's a power outage, or maybe if you're just in financial hardship, they do have this help program where they donate 
power stations to people in need. And I'll leave a link to that below as well. Um, there's a few questionnaires that you have to fill out and you could get one of these for free if you qualify. So that's something you might want to check out as well. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I'll continue to use the Mega One over the next few weeks. I'll probably just throw it in the side by side. I'll use it around the farm on different tools and projects and continue to test the unit and see how it does. If uh, anything is noteworthy or stands out, I'll try to throw up a short video and, and give you guys an update on its performance. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.